Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. Today we have a review of a game called Pixie Queen. This one just came out at Essen. I uh, don't know exactly when it's going to be coming stateside, but it is a punishing, in a good way, worker placement game with a whole mess of worker placement spots to go to. Yeah, it is a two to five player game in which each player is representing a pixie clan or a pixie group who's trying to bring resources into the queen. Now the idea behind the game is you have this evil pixie queen who's ordering all of her pixie army to go steal resources from the village. The village is actually the worker placement spots. But she's enslaved all of your pixies <laughs> yeah. in the mines. So you're going to have to be working in the mines and then gradually sending these pixies out to become loyal servants. Yeah, she's not a pleasant or nice pixie queen for sure. You're going to spend most of this game losing points. Yes. Uh, you just want to try to mitigate that as much as possible. And then along the way, there's some, th some end of game scoring points that you can get. In the end, you're just going to basically balance those out and just see see where who, who did the best. Yeah, so let's talk about the components in the game. Uh, you have five different types of resources. You have apples, honey, bread, and then silver and gold. These are the things that she's going to want uh, to be offered uh, through the course of the game. The offerings will come in seven different rounds. Now, these are the bit, uh, three basic types of foods, and what you need mm -hmm. to do is collect those foods and make sure you have them hidden behind your player screen at the end of the round in order to offer those to her, because if you don't, guess what? You're in a world of trouble. Yeah, exactly, the, uh, and, and these offerings don't get revealed until the end of the round, yeah. so if you find yourself running low or out of bread and you don't have it to offer, you better hope someone else offers it, because there's a cool mechanic here or if no one offers the right thing, she really gets mad. Yeah. <laughs> so you definitely want to have someone do that, and that is part of the game. We'll get into that in a second, where there's a little push your luck thing there. Across the top of the board are your three end of the game scoring tracks. You have offerings, which you can do during the game. You have loyal servant markers. When your pixies get to a certain position into the board, or at the top of that apex of the triangle, they will become loyal servants and gain you points at the end of the game. And then you have rings. These are things that you're going to be forging with your gold in order to offer to her. And they're all color-coded, so you have gold and silver, gold and silver, gold and silver. It's one of the end-game conditions, so if all the gold are gone from all three tracks, that's one of the ways the games will end. Also, if all seven rounds have been gone through, that will end the game. Yeah, these are things that take some doing. These are not, uh, you know, making offerings, certainly becoming a loyal servant. These are not things you can do immediately. It takes a lot of effort to get there, so like we said, a lot of the game is going to be spent mitigating those lost points in the hopes to getting a few of these yeah. at best. No one's going to be collecting a ton of these things by any means. Each player has a player screen in front of them that will hide their resources, which is very important because it uh, doesn't tell people what you might be offering from round to round. Also, you have this little flap in the front, which is really cool. It's going to hold three different types of tiles, uh, which you can only hold one of each. These give you ongoing benefits, either collecting resources or food at the start of your round getting a special benefit that's just unique to you mm -hmm. or a one-time uh, benefit which are different types of tiles that you can collect through a worker placement spot in the game. So to start the game you're just going to randomly pick a first player uh, and then every player is going to get two of every resource minus the first player uh, which gets uh, doesn't get too honey. Everyone else ah, will get too honey. And then you're going to simply go through the different rounds. The very, there's five steps in a, a round, so to speak. Right. The very first is stealing. So any of your pixies that have progressed up that triangle worker placement spot will be able to steal. Now what's cool about this is all of the pixies at the start of the game will start in the mine. And you progressively have to move them up. And we'll get into how that works. However, we have a game in progress here that can show you what will happen. Your Pixies are going to steal, and they're going to steal the amount of resources that are above this stealing hand that you see here. And those will be taken from the supply and added back behind your screen. Yeah, and what's really cool about these spots are these are the worker placement spots. So in addition to having that action that you're going to activate during the worker placement phase, these stealing icons are above those spots. So you, if you're low on apples, you want to go someplace that gives you apples. Uh, there's some places that give you more bread than honey, things like that. Yeah, now it should be noted too that this triangle that leads up to the loyal servant to her castle, they get progressively better. So as you progress your pixie up the board, they allow you to steal more resources at the be very beginning of the phase. The second thing that happens is the main meat and potatoes of the game. This is the worker placement thing. Each player will have four discs in front of them, which they're allowed to place on the board. Now, the action spaces here, the worker placement spaces, there's 22 of them, and they all offer different varieties 
of circles where you can place your action disks. Some of them have double markers. Some of them have only one space that is unique to just you being able to place. And some of them are just single spaces that are off on the sides of the board. You're allowed to place them. Now there's some rules in here. If I go to a single space, you simply place one. I can also go to a double space, and it requires two action disks to be able to take that worker placement spot. One of the great things, though, is that as Pixies populate these top parts of all of these double spaces, you can then go to the bottom space being able to take that action. It doesn't have to be your Pixie either. It can right. be any player's Pixie. Yeah, it's very cool because it gives you, there's a little bit of a dynamic that exists between the promotion of the Pixies, because like Jeremy said, once the game gets going, people are going to have this place littered with Pixies as they climb up to become loyal servants, but it makes all of those spots easier to go to. So if you're going to a spot, like we said earlier, so you can steal these goods mm -hmm. because that looks attractive to you, you'll just know that you've made these worker placement action there much easier to uh, activate for all the players. Yeah, and these spots give you a variety of different things. They allow you to collect resources, they allow you to manipulate the turn order, they even allow you to manipulate the turn order during that turn, mm -hmm. but only uh, during that specific turn. There's ones that allow you to do copies. The two I really want to talk about are in-game conditions and probably two of the most important ones. One of them is the offering, and I love this portion of the board. When you go to the space, you offer the queen a specific number of goods equal to whatever goods are placed there plus one more of your choice so i could offer each one of these goods and then also offer an extra silver and then i take the first one of these and it progressively grows through the course of the game that's how you collect one of the end game tiles yeah and this is interesting too because of these three sets up here this is the only one that goes low to high yeah and it gets more and more difficult for any player to go here because like jeremy said he put adds one more resource and then that is what someone has to offer, and so on and so forth, yeah. to where if you're offering this 10 spot, you're going to have to give a, a tremendous number. amount of resources to get that. Yeah. The second spot I really want to talk about is the one where you get to craft rings. This also is correlated to one of the end game conditions. You craft rings according to where you are on the gold track. Now, there is a gold track, and then there is a silver track, which you're going to be pushing it up through the course of the game. We'll get into how you do that. However, the number of gold it takes to craft a ring becomes decreased or right. easier to do the further you progress up the gold track. When you go to this location, you simply look at this uh, location of where you are. I have one gold, and I could spend a gold and immediately take one of uh, the first available uh, ring spots. Yeah, it creates an interesting, interesting dynamic because these are in descending order, starting from 10 going down to 4. So you could try to push yourself up this track so you could only spend one, maybe two gold to get yeah. the ring. Or you could right off the bat, if you are able to collect four or three gold, go ahead and pay that extra cost so that you ensure grabbing the higher points. That's just one of many. There's 21 worker placement spots in this game. They all offer really cool abilities. Yeah. All of them are really, really good as well. However, once all the players have placed all of their discs out onto the board, you then go to the offering phase. I like this phase as well because in most games when you do blind offerings or blind bids, it's a bidding war. Yeah. This isn't a bidding war. This is simply you offering something to the queen. What are you trying to offer? Well, this is a great thing. During each round, during this time, one of these will be flipped over, telling you what you need to offer them. Under each of these tiles is one of the three different types of food. Right, and these things have to be offered by at least one player. When Jeremy said, you have to offer this, you don't have to. Yeah. If I think Jeremy's definitely going to give her an apple, I could take silver or gold. Yeah. And what's neat, what needs to be noted here is, your offering needs to be one type of good. Yeah. So I can't have a handful of silver, gold, and honey. Yeah. Um, Unless you've used, there is an action space on the board that allows you to make two offerings, which right. is a cool feature. But if I offer one of these other things, as long as someone else has given her the apple she wants, I'm going to benefit by offering my gold and my silver by being able to move up the gold and silver track. Now, two things happen here. If you don't offer her anything, you get whipped and you lose five victory points. Right. If you accidentally aren't paying attention to what the type of food is and you offer a different type of food, <laughs> you get whipped again, you lose five victory points. So you have to pay attention to what she's wanting. Now, two things can happen from this offering. If at least one player offers her an apple, 
awesome. You go to the <laughs> reward phase. If not, you directly go to the punishment phase, and one other thing happens. The person that is in the last turn order has to demote a pixie. Yeah. That means take them from the board and put them back into their mind, which is an awful thing. Yeah, that can be really bad, if depending on where you've, or how far you've promoted your pixies. If you have two pixies and they're very high up in this sort of pyramid, mm -hmm. one of them has to go all the way down, and that's a few promotion steps. So. Step four is the reward phase. Again, that only happens if one player at least offers her the type of food that she's wanting. The next thing that happens is that you look around the table and you find who offered her silver and gold. If anyone offered her silver or gold, you're gonna compare those numbers. If you offered her at least one silver or at least one gold, you're gonna move up one silver or one gold on that gold, right. gold track. The person that offered her the most of each of those will move up an extra position. So that's how you progress up those silver and gold tracks through the course of the game. The second thing that happens is you're going to look at the type of food that she wanted, in this case, apple, apples. Uh, whoever offered her apples then gets to promote pixies equal to the number of the apples that they use. So if I offered her five apples, I get five pixie promotions, yeah. which is great. When you promote pixies, you simply move them up the board uh, X number of spaces. You can move the same pixie multiple times or different pixies, one each. Now. Another thing, there's player interaction in this game. If you want to take a spot that's higher up than another player is, you can spin an apple to demote that pixie into the location that you leave from. So there's a lot of take that in this game yeah. as well with that. Uh, once that's done, you go on to the, the penalty phase, and this is awful. <laughs> this is where bad things happen every single round, no matter if you made an offering or not. There's always going to be a penalty. The queen is always beating you down. Two things happen here. One, she's going to look at the gold and silver track independently of one another. And between both of these tracks is a number of whips. Of course, the highest position, you actually gain victory points. But all these lower positions, she's going to whip you. So if I'm in the lo lowest rung for gold and the lowest rung for silver, I lose six victory points. Yeah, you're going to go down that track very quickly. In fact, at the beginning of the game, in the first round, most people... Yeah. are going to lose six victory points because the first two spaces here are three whips. You yeah. really have to accelerate up this track to try to mitigate that punishment at the end of each round. Yep. The other thing is she's going to look in your minds. And if you have uh, uh, if you have just one pixie or no pixies in there, you lose one victory point. If you have two or more, you lose two victory points. You want to promote those pixies out and start getting them into the worker placement spots. Right. The queen does not like a lazy pixie. Yeah. <laughs> One of the other things I want to talk about briefly is this middle section. You may be asking, well, how do you gain these points? As you promote your pixie up the board, you'll eventually become a loyal servant. This is a spot that you can't be kicked out of that round. And at the end of the round, this person will become a loyal servant, and they will occupy this position, giving you that spot. So that pixie's out of the game for you, yeah. and it can't occupy spots anymore but it's getting you victory points. It is an interesting dynamic for a worker placement game where yeah. you're usually and often acquiring more workers. Mm -hmm. This one allows you to promote a pixie ultimately out of the game, but like Jeremy said, the benefit is pretty significant because you can get 10, 9, in descending order, yeah. some victory points. We have just skimmed over the rules here. Yes. There's a lot of other things. There's ways to go mining with your pixies, to draw random things out of the bag, and even chain pixies down of other players. So they can't leave without spinning bread to <laughs> to get their pixie out. There's a lot of cool things going on this, uh, in this game. Now, we had a really cool conversation for about an hour after we played this mm -hmm. about discerning opinions about do people like being punished in games? And this is definitely a game, as I said, like Dungeon Lords or Dungeon Pets, where you constantly feel like you're trying to dig yourself out of a hole. But everyone is in the same boat here. Everyone's doing yep. the same thing, and it's really not, if you go into it thinking you're just losing points, well, you're just trying to mitigate your loss of points. And I like that aspect to it. I like all of these different components that work together, and I think, that, I think, it, I think it's really, really ingenious. Oh, I yeah, really I, do. I think, the, I, I agree. The game is really, really smart, mm -hmm. really well-designed game. I think the human psychology of wanting to progress yeah. uh, is the only thing that would stand in the way of a game like this normally. However, with this game, this is one of those games that embraces its theme just in the right way so yeah. that you can laugh and have fun about it, just like we were talking about the punishment and the yeah. fact that the queen's whipping you. If you embrace that in sort of the over-the-top ridiculous nature that it is, it's actually, it makes that uh, negative point situation a little bit more fun. Yeah, we would never got into the situation where a group of players was picking on another player. I could see that being a problem in this game. There's no really checks and balances to 
uh, preventing one player from constantly having a group beat them down. Possibly, uh, yeah. So you could run into that. We didn't run into that with our games. Um, also, there is player elimination. If you don't like player elimination, there is a pit of oblivion. So if you get to negative 60 points, the queen throws you into a pit and you're dead. Like, all these things are cool. I like all yeah, these different aspects about it. I have to admit, though, it'd have to be pretty bad scenario for you to lose 60 points. Although, when we played with four players, we did have someone dangerously close two, two to that. Two points away from it. That's yeah. right. Uh, also, there is a two-player variant. It will play differently. I have not played it two-player. No. Neither is David. I can't tell you how that plays. There's a dummy player. We played it as a four-player game, and I think everyone thought that was pr probably the sweet spot for the game. Yeah, I think so. Uh, just because of the number of spaces on the board you're occupying, there's, there's, like you said, there's 21 different worker placement spots. So with four action discs, that's 16 of them that are being used. With five player, you're pretty much using all the spots. Oh yeah, five game. player would be pretty crowded. I think yeah. three and four would be where, where I would peg it. And one other thing I want to mention about the game too, this game has a, we didn't mention these dice that are sitting on, on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some things in this game, the randomness in this game mm -hmm. is very limited, yeah. like any good game, but there is just a taste of it to make it fun. For instance, uh, when the queen, when you flip this over and you discover what she wants, yeah. there's some fun randomness there. Yeah. There's going to be three of each of these uh, basic resources, and you're only using seven of them, so you never know exactly what's going to be coming out and when. Yeah. And then on top of it, there's these dice. These dice are related to certain worker placement spots where you can just go here, here's a resource die, you mm -hmm. roll it, you take those resources. This die <laughs> is one of those, in the theme of the game, punishing dies. This is when Jeremy was saying that someone might uh, gang up on another player. Mm -hmm. This little guy could be a part of that because you're going to roll this, and if I get three whips, I get to dole those out on behalf of the queen however I choose. I can give one to Jeremy, one to him, one to him, or I can give all three to Jeremy. Yeah. So this die, it didn't really get used too much in our no, game. No, not in our games, no. I think people like to play it more like well, a strategic... The, the, the other thing is, too, with, with five players, you're going to have a lot more positions being used, those True. being one of them. The other two things I want to mention, too... As the board starts to fill up, especially as pixies start to occupy spaces and with five players, the queen wants you to use your action discs. If you don't and you pass and say, I'm done for the turn, she whips you and you lose five <laughs> victory points. So you have to do that. The other thing is when you steal at the very beginning, that is mandatory too. You have to steal from the villagers and put those resources because at the end of the game, the person that didn't give those resources to the queen and has the most loses points yeah. for those. So again it embraces that theme from start to finish with all these things where the queen is asking you to do things and you have to do them for her yeah that last point is interesting too because a lot of games if you didn't pay attention to the rules at the beginning you'd think oh i've got a nice supply of bread i wonder how much those are worth at the end of the game no 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 you don't want any <laughs> resources <worth> <laughs> behind your screen that means that you've been hoarding goods away from the queen and she will punish you yeah uh, this is one of my favorite games this year, and I, 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 I love worker placement games. I like how the way they've twisted this and kind of put the whole genre on its ear. I mean, this is totally my jam. And I we and we didn't even mention this the way it needs to uh, that it deserves, but it is a gorgeous looking game too. Yeah. The artwork on this board, although it might look dark to you, uh, it's very, very beautiful artwork. Yeah. The character art's really well done. The components are fantastic. These dice are nice and chunky, yeah. and I don't. Those look like they're printed on. It's yeah. really, really nice game. Cool. So this is Pixie Queen, two to five players from Game Brewer. I have no idea when it's coming to the states. If you have a chance to pick it up now, go do so. If you have questions about it, make them in the comments below. Subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and everything else that we do here, Man vs. Meeple. And we will catch you guys next time. Bye bye. Season 2 of Man vs. Meeple is sponsored in part by Cool Stuff Inc. Cool Stuff in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.